In this video, I'm going to show you the best match defense that you can use to defend trips tight in and how it works and what you need to know about match when you're defending trips tight in. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to encourage you to go ahead and click that subscribe button. I release new videos every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. So if you're looking to get your take your game to the next level, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, guys, so I'm in the nickel 335 will formation. We're going to be breaking down some match coverage, and I just cannot wait to talk about this. This is something that I have been spending a ton of time just researching, uh, watching several different uh, content creators, watching different people on you know the real NFL, and trying to figure out how can we actually craft a defense that's going to work really, really well. And so we're going to talk about quarters against trips tight end today, but we're going to also in the future talk about some other coverages as well, like cover six and cover four palms and how they work against this, this coverage. They're all actually really, really good this year. You'll find that when you play a competitive player, they'll mix this in. And I've been kind of learning just as I've been running this that obviously you can't, I, I would argue that you can't run match every single play or you can't run quarters every single play, but you can run match concepts like cover two sink or cover three match or um, cover four quarters or cover four palms or cover six and you mix it all together and you can really build an, an incredible, incredible defense. So that being said, 335 will is my defense of choice for this. Um, you can find this in several different defenses as well. I'm in the Bears playbook. The Ravens playbook would be another playbook that I would recommend because it has dime two, three, six, which has some really cool pressure out of it and it also has a uh, nickel two four five which is a really good defense another defense that are actually i think is very underrated is the seattle defense and the reason why is because it has the nickel wide nine or the buffalo defense the buffalo defense has two four five odd and nickel wide nine so check those two defenses out i think you'll really enjoy them so cover four quarters today we're just going to show you kind of how this works against this so all we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and respot the ball most of the time if you play someone that runs trips tight in they're going to put their trips to the wide side of the field. Occasionally, you'll play a really good trips player that will actually have setups for both sides of the field, but most of the time, they have setups from the wide side of the field. So the way that this works, I'm just going to kind of walk you through step by step. So I'm going to zoom out here for just a second. And uh, we talked about quarters in previous videos, and I think that it's been very helpful for people to understand kind of what this does and how it works. Um, so essentially, match defense, right? Man match. So what that essentially means is it's a zone defense, but... If the receivers do certain things, it's going to be match. And one of the things that I've said is that I really like match. And the reason why is because it adapts to the formation. All right. Uh, it's going to defend a little differently from for trips tight end than it's going to defend for gun spread or for gun bunch. It's also going to defend a little bit differently depending on the route combo that your opponent puts on the field. He's not going to. So, so and, and to, to explain all that, let's just dive in. So, Quarters essentially is, you know, essentially what we're going to get from this is we're, we're not going to get what's called the solo check. And the reason why we're not going to get the solo check is because the tight end is compressed. Now, if the tight end was outside, we would certainly get the solo check. And let me just explain what that means. So if the tight end were to run like a drag or something like that, you're going to see here that if I motion him to the outside, this is now a trips formation, right? Essentially, it's tray open or something like that you're going to see that that outside quarter zone is going to take him, even though he's not running a vertical route. Well, if you know anything about quarters, it really does kind of heavily depend on the verticalness of the routes. And the vertical route is kind of defined as something that is seven yards or more. I think it's about 10 yards, but every year it kind of changes in Madden. It used to be five, sometimes it's seven, some years it's 10. So vertical route, so obviously not a drag, not a smoke screen. Those are two that are kind of not considered vertical routes. So now, if you watch, if I put the tight end on a drag right here, you're going to notice that the defense is going to change. So if you watch that outside corner zone, uh, outside quarter zone on the right, he's not going to follow the tight end on the drag. You see there, it's actually going to be the safety, as you can see right there. Okay, so quarters is really, really good against trips tight end for a couple of reasons. Number one, one of the most popular routes in trips tight end is the deep crossing route, okay? And this actually um, creates a coverage that I like to call, or, or I'm pretty sure the technical term for this is um, essentially this right side safety on the weak side is gonna be able to poach. And really what this comes down to, and I've talked about this before, is quarters is all about getting two on ones in the passing game, right? Brandon Saley's famous for saying that, you know, he wants to get two on ones in the passing game. And so that's basically the idea of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a numbers advantage without having to define our coverage without having to you know have a bunch of crazy adjustments we're trying to basically let the coverage do the work for us and so um that being said that's somewhat how the right side works so um 
back to this side for a second. So on the trip side, the again, I've talked about this before. If you can count to three, you can play quarters, right? So um, the number one receiver on a side is the most outside receiver. So in this example, the most outside receiver to the left side is Mike Evans, okay? So if number one, Mike Evans, if he runs a vertical route, and that I'm just going to say for simplicity's sake, 10 yards, and he cuts inside or outside. So if it's a 10-yard in route, 10-yard out route, if it's a 10-yard skinny post, if it's a 10-yard C route, whatever it is, Williams is now responsible for taking him man-to-man. -man. Also, if Mike Evans runs a vertical route, like a streak route, he's going to take him man-to-man. -man. But if Mike Evans doesn't, let's say Mike Evans runs underneath on something, let's say, for example, like a smoke screen, okay, then that quarter zone is now going to turn his attention to number two. So you'll see here I've got a smoke screen and a corner route. Watch how this corner is going to go down, and then you're going to see here he's going to bail back, and he's going to be able to make a play on that outside corner. Okay, that's the idea of that in particular route. Okay, now um, this outside or inside quarter zone, or actually let me show you the vertical route. So let's say, for example, um, you know, let's say, for example, we do a route combination uh, like this. This is one of my favorite route combinations in the game. Maybe do something like this with a vertical streak. Watch the left side guy. You're going to see he's going to take him in man coverage once he gets that 10-yard cut. And as you can see, we, we play pretty decent defense on that. Okay? So that's how that works. So the relationship. One of the things that's really important when you start to teach quarters and you're trying to understand it, or at least this is what I found, is you have to understand what the relationship from the zone to the cover or to the receiver is. So who is that guy relating to? That's really, really important, okay? So if I come to this guy, who is his relationship with on the offense? Who's he relating to, right? In this example, in quarters, he's relating to the number two receiver, which the number two receiver would be Chris Godwin. So if Chris Godwin runs a vertical route and he cuts inside or outside or just continues vertical, then this guy is going to take him. If he doesn't, let's say he runs a hitch or a flat or a drag, then Harrison is now going to turn his attention to Mike Evans, who is going to be running the vertical route, unless the number three receiver. And so let me just show you what I'm kind of getting at here. So if I run two streaks and a flat, I want you to watch who takes circle. See how that, see how that right there? Okay. That's really, really important. That's really, 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 really important. So if I go into instant replay, what you're going to see is again, number two does not go on a vertical route. So what's this guy's responsibility? Well, his responsibility is not to deal with number three. His responsibility is to deal with number one. So he comes over here to number one, and he is basically kind of splitting the difference, almost playing like a deep half, if you will. And then as you see here, the defense play is relatively effective. Okay? So that's, that's you know, kind of, you know, what he does. Now, who's in relationship with Antonio Brown, the number three receiver? Well, I'm glad you asked. In quarters, this is an interesting dynamic. So Johnson um, here, this inside quarters on the right, as you saw right there, is in relationship with Antonio Brown. As long if Antonio Brown runs vertical, which is this is a very very good technique in my opinion. If they run a crossing route, Johnson is taking that crossing route and he will absolutely bag it. Right, so you get a PA counter go set up or something like that. Johnson will take that. If Antonio Brown goes to the flat route. Now, this guy is what I call the poach defender. So the poach defender essentially is, I mean, you can call it robber, you can call it rat, you can call it poach, you can call it whatever you want. Um, the bottom line is he's free to take, he's free to come over to this right or to this um, trip side now and work. Because why? Well, if the tight end on the right side uh, runs a vertical route, then this outside quarter will take him in man to man. If the tight end runs a flat route, then you know we're still going to be fine. But if the tight end runs a drag, it's a little bit differently, and I'm going to come back to that in just a second. This quarter flat is basically in relationship with the running back, okay? Uh, three red hook, same kind of thing. These guys are basically working the underneath together, but they're in their standard stuff that they always do from quarters, which is essentially their first to the flat on both sides, and then this guy is responsible for match carrying and delivering any kind of shallow crossers, okay? So... That being said, let me let me show you something here. So we're gonna send we're gonna uh, essentially do 
that route combo I just showed you, and I want you to watch kind of who covers who. So what you'll see is that safety on the right will come over, he'll play that circle receiver, and as you can see, this deep crosser that is so good is really actually fairly difficult to get open uh, in this example. Now let's say, for example, that I did something like this, and I wanted to run, you know, like a PA boot over setup, okay? So I wanted to run like a PA boot over setup, what you'll see from the uh, defense is, again, his guy doesn't run a vertical route. So now he turns his attention, and you see right there, we play pretty good against that crosser. So this is what I, one of the main reasons why I like this defense so much. Now, the number one problem with this is if a tight end runs a drag. And the reason why is because, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, match is going to essentially shift. And essentially, the safety on the right side and that inside quarter is going to be responsible for taking the safety which is fine if circle goes on a crossing route. So you get something like this, this is actually fine. You're gonna see right here, we're gonna actually match this really, really well, and we're gonna be able to take away that crossing route. So good defense, right? But let's say, for example, that we did that. We do something like this, okay? Watch that circle receiver of the skinny. You're gonna see right there that you can kind of thread that needle and you can put yourself in kind of a vulnerable position. And I've talked about this before uh, when, my, when I did my bunch video. How do, you, how do you know who to use or who's the problem? Who do, you get, who do you have to figure out? Well, in this defense, really, if you think about it, the biggest problem would be a route combination essentially like this, if you will. Um, and the reason why is because I can hit that whole shot right there. So... How do we deal with that? Well, what I like to do in this defense is I like to go ahead and, I mean, you can do one or two things, okay? You can do one or two things. I would rather just use her right here, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, I'm going to take this backside defensive end, put him on a bluff blitz, so he's going to kind of do responsible for the three red hook side, and then I'm just gonna basically, if the if the if circle goes on that vertical route, like this, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna carry it, so I'm just gonna carry it, and then I'll and then I'll come back down. Once my once my guy can kind of catch up and play it, I'll do that. I think that's the easiest way to defend this. Honestly, you could probably get away with, um, you could probably get away with this in general. So you see right here. See how, see how he gets matched right there? So you don't really have to worry too much about the tight end drag. Um, you know, and it's really the only thing that's a major issue. And then other than that, you're just going to basically sit down here and deal with any kind of shallow crosser. So, for example, let's say you get, um, you know, let's say you get an angle route from this back. So you're going here, and you're just going to kind of help in here. Um, I think it makes it really easy because, and the reason why is because, you don't have to worry about the safety, and then you're free to now, if they run inside zone, you can muddy up the inside zone deal. So to me, that's the best way to use her out of this. Just sit on this guy, and if you see it, if you see um, any kind of drag, you don't have to worry about that. You can just carry this guy up the field, and honestly, that's we'll just live with that. Um, because most people, if you think about it, like let's say, let me go to the verticals play because it has a tight end drag. So if I'm going to the verticals place, I'm carrying, 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 and then I can just hand him off right there, and then now I'm free to come back in this area, okay? Let me give you one more option. Um, the other option is to essentially use the solo check, essentially create it yourself. And the way that you're gonna do that is you're going to man this guy up on the tight end. Now, one just kind of piece of advice that I've learned from do, running this defense I would go ahead and press on that side if you're going to do that. And the reason I would do that is because now you're in a situation, in my opinion, where if they do run it, so let's say they do run a tight end drag, you are going to get really good match out of this. The problem is the tight end drag is actually open. Okay, so that's just my perspective. I don't think it really helped because they can just throw the tight end drag on there. You're still going to have to use her here to help that tight end drag. If you don't, they're gonna hit the tight end drag over and over again. And you still have to trust that safety to play the crosser, okay? Part of quarters is learning who can you trust in the defense and who can you not trust in the defense, right? So another little solution that you could run 
is essentially this. I could uh, show blitz, okay? I could then take this outside um, safety that comes down in the box. I could go ahead and put him on a purple zone. And then now what I can do is I'm free to use her here. And the reason I like to do this, and we're gonna, this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but the reason I like to do this is now I'm in a really good position to essentially help out on the tight end drag. And then I can basically uh, work back once I hand him off. So let me show you. So it looks kind of like this right here, okay? So let's say they run that verticals play, snap of the ball. I'll come here, come here, come here, come here, because I don't have to worry about that crosser and trust that player to play that, okay? So those are a couple of ways that you can set up this defense. I really prefer to just play stock quarters. I think it does a really good job, um, honestly. I think the just standard, just run standard quarters uh, does a really good job. If you want to man align this, I'm, I'm not going to have time to go into everything about this, but essentially what you get now, if I'm going to man align, I'm going to man align and show blitz. And the reason why is because it's going to look something like this. And the reason why I like this so much is because this guy is now in what's is now in the poach territory. This guy is now manned up on the cross on the tight end. Now you're um, kind of in a unique position, a little bit more freer with your user. So let's say they ran that concept from verticals. Now they're just passing each other off. It's really nothing, you know, too big of a deal. And you see how good that match is. Again, if I had a little bit more speed, I'd probably get back on that. But that's the idea. So. You know, I really like this one as well. Um, I think man aligning against trips is a really good way to defend it. You know, you could easily, um, I mean, there's so much you could do. I would bring this guy over in here. If I was running this, I'd bring this guy like kind of here. You know, you could leave him out there, but I would just bring him here. And then you just want to manually back off on that solo receiver so you don't get bombed. But let's say they run that verticals concept now. And let's just send this guy up the vertical. I want you to watch the circle receiver. You see how you get the same problem, okay? So I think that's important to understand if you're gonna play that, okay? Now, one way you can combat it is you put that left side guy in a, in, in a deep half, and you know now you're gonna be in a decent position, especially the problem then becomes, I think, corner routes, but you, know, you could do something like this, uh, and what you'll see is that if they try to throw this circle receiver, he's not gonna be open. Um, but the problem with that is then when they, you know, again, you know, one, whenever you change something in a match, I think it's really important to understand, uh, what you've changed because a lot of times what'll happen is you'll change one little thing like what I just did and it'll break the coverage. Ideally you want it to look like this and then you can use her, this guy, this is the, this is the ideal way to run this, right? So now you don't have to worry too much about a tight end drag you're primarily just in relationship with this guy you see that see how see how they swapped off really easily there and then i'm just working that drag or the streak so anyways that's quarters for trips tight in guys if you stuck around and watch this video i do want to encourage you to join my true fan membership you can get access to every single guy that i release in madden 22 i've released 10 e 10 ebooks so far one of which is a match defensive guide that actually goes down and breaks down exactly what the match coverages do, formation to formation, the best adjustments that I've found, how to actually get stops out of them. And also, I think I've broken down a couple of blitzes in that ebook as well so that you can get some pressure from your match coverage. Thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Again, my true fan membership is $10 a month, and you can cancel it whenever you want. It's just a Patreon. Help support me a ton. And if you want to get access to it, I'll put a link to that down in the description and in the comments.